on the Texas A&M Sports Network. From Learfield, live from Ludie's Country Store and Barbecue on Harvey Road in College Station, this is the Buzz Williams Show, presented by Coors Light, Mountain Cold Refreshment Made to Chill, 2023 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. Visit Rudy's.com to find real Texas barbecue near you. And by Twisted Tea, Hard Ice Tea for the 12th man. Please drink responsibly. Now, here is the voice of Texas A&M basketball, Andrew Monaco. Howdy, and we welcome you to this edition of the Buzz Williams Show. We're at Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. 504 Harvey Road here in College Station. For the next hour, we'll be talking Aggie men's basketball, and we'll be doing it with the assistance of Buzz Williams. Devin Johnson, Steve Rockefort, Lyle Wolf will be here for the next 60 minutes talking Aggie basketball. We're so glad that you have joined us here at Rudy's, perhaps on the Texas A&M Sports Network, streaming on the 12th Man mobile app or Learfield's Varsity Network app, or joining us behind the mic on the Texas A&M Basketball Facebook page. However you're joining us, we thank you for joining us this evening. We'll continue. It's the Buzz Williams Show. Or rather, that's not Buzz Williams Show. We return to Rudy's. This is Aggie Basketball from Learfield. All Hands Craft Cocktails is a new bar strength can cocktail. It's made with six times distilled vodka and 10% ABV to make sure you never have to sacrifice the quality of your drink. All Hands Craft Cocktails, founded by Aggies and a proud partner of Texas A&M Athletics. This is the Buzz Williams Show. We're doing it without Buzz Williams this week. We've got Devin Johnson. We've got Lyle Wolf. We've got Steve Rockefort, Coach Dev, Coach Rock, Coach Lyle, all part of our show. Who's the first one up? <clears throat> Come on up. And this is where I, this is where I brag about myself here because as Coach Dev comes up because we did a podcast together. We did it twice. <laughs> You only heard one of them, unfortunately. The other one is somewhere by Pluto about now. But one of the podcasts, Andrew Monaco Show, had Coach Dev as we got the season started, and I'm thrilled to have him alongside. How are you, Coach? I'm good. How are you? The first thing I want to start with is we go to LSU. You bring your family. You meet some family. That's got to be awesome to be able to do that over the course of a season. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, and this year was special because it was my wife's birthday, uh, January 20th. So, we had her side of the family out and my side of the family. And, um, I had some old high school teammates come in town. My first time seeing them uh, since high school, which was good as well. So I love that Baton Rouge trip. Yeah, and uh, uh, leaving with a little more baggage, and by that, having to stuff a W into your baggage just makes it even better, <laughs> exactly doesn't it? Exactly right. And this year I stuffed a little king cake in there and, and the win. So okay. it was good. Okay, so I ask you, is that one of the best meals you have all year is when Boots' family feeds us? Of course, of course. It was great. Uh, and they went all out this year, you know. Uh, so, and then the dessert was amazing as yeah. well. So, yeah. it, it was really good. We're appreciative of them for doing that. They've done that the last three years. We've traveled there. Um, and so, we're very appreciative of them. So much love in that room. Yes. As well. I, I feel like everybody gets embraced. You just come through that door. You just get embraced. It's yeah. fantastic. And that's the special part about it, um, uh, Coach Buzz's team, the love. Uh, it's not just about basketball. Uh, we include the families in everything that we do. Um, and, and you had a, a chance to see um, the, the special love that everyone has for each other, but how far everyone would go for each other, for them to cook all of that food for our, for our guys and the laughs and the stories that was told in that room, it was, it was special. Now, there is also that part of that room when everybody gets their plate, it's pretty quiet there for a while, too. Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. It's, it is quiet. And, uh, you know, sometimes we go on trips and you see it. Some people won't eat yeah. uh, when we go because yeah. they'll say they're on a diet yeah. or something. Yeah. Uh, but when we go to Baton Rouge, everybody eats. <laughs> There's no diets when we go to Baton Rouge. You know Rouge. Justin Moore, associate AD, yes. right? And you know how well he eats for 364 days? Yes. Except, Except that, that one. day. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he has three pieces of king cake. Then he says, you know what? Uh, Kristen wants me to bring some sweet potato pie back for her. And 
I still don't understand why he's got the pecan pie as well, but he goes out and yes. that's his one. That's his one. Yeah. Meal for I'll, sure. I'll have to ask Christian if he, uh, if he brought that pie We've home never to followed her. up on that, have I, we? No, we haven't. We have to ask that question. He might have ate it in the plane on the way back. <laughs> it's very possible. There were a lot of people saying they were going to have that pie for breakfast, something like that, which yes. is a very smart decision. Yes, I agree. Win in that one. You followed up with a win in Missouri, and unfortunately, you suffered the loss on Saturday um, to Ole Miss, three and four so far in conference. Deb, where's this team right now, do you think, as it's a bye before we get back to Florida on, on Saturday? Uh, we're still growing. Mm-hmm. Uh, still growing together. Um, have a, we've had a lot of injuries. Um, so we're we're getting to the point where everybody is playing. Everybody's getting closer to 100%. Um, and with that, we're still finding out some some things with lineups. Uh, we're finding out who can play together, who um, who needs to come off the bench, who needs to start. We're finding out different things amongst our team, and that that's the special part about it. Uh, we're in the middle part of the season, just finished. Uh, the month of January and, and headed to February, and, and we're still finding out things about our team. So, so that's the special part about these guys. Um, but as you know, these guys are not going to give up. Um, <laughs> these guys are working hard every day, and uh, we, will, we will turn this thing. It's interesting. Buzz said this last January going into February. <clears throat> as, good a, as good a calendar as it was, then everybody starts looking and projecting. And he said, when you do that, when you say, well, if we win this game, this game, this game, this game, and this team does this, this. He goes, it just makes you anxious. And to me, it kind of solidified the control what you can control. And all you can control is really on Saturday, the opening tip. And then from there, exactly you, right. you can do that. You, I'll correct myself. The, the practice leading up to that and your own work. But there is only you can only control Florida. You can't control what Tennessee does or Auburn does or anything like that. I think this team has really adopted that mindset for a while now. That's a, that's a credit to the staff as well. Yeah, I agree with that. And right now, um, it's, it's good to have a bye because uh, now we get to focus on ourselves mm-hmm. um, a little bit more. Um, and so going into this week, we're going to focus a lot on ourselves. Um, and like you said, and then on Friday, we will practice and prepare for Florida. And Saturday, we'll play Florida. But we can't think about Florida today. We can't think about Florida tomorrow. We have some things that we have to continue to improve ourselves. Wade Taylor, the fourth, named one of the ten finalists, the Bob Cousy Award. I can't think of anybody better, to tell you the truth. He's having an amazing season. <laughs> uh, amazing season. Um, a memorable season. Yeah. And, and like I always tell you, he's even better off the floor. Um, the, the thing that I'm impressed with is not what he's doing on the court. Uh, we, we see that every day. Um, I'm impressed with his leadership skills that he's having. Um, he's always been that guy that – you know, kind of uplifts the room. And, and when he steps into the room, he makes you smile and everybody loves him. Um, but this year he's doing it with everybody. Yeah. Uh, he, and, and he's doing it with personal conversations with his teammates. And he's doing it as a group in front of everybody. Um, and, and that's the thing that I'm excited about, his leadership skills and where it's going. Uh, he has a bright future. And, and if he continue to improve um, his leadership skills, improve his communication with his teammates, it's even brighter. How do you know an 18-year-old Wade Taylor the fourth? The moment will not be too big for him because every big moment four is in the middle of it. And when we were recruiting him uh, in, in the summer, watching his AAU games, there was no game and no stage that was too big for him. Mm-hmm. And then we w- we saw him at high school, um, and he played amazing you know in regular season and then in the playoffs and there was no arena and no high school gym that we saw him at that were too big for him um and you know you'll walk into the gym and you'll see his size and you'll you'll think that ah this can't be the guy that i'm coming to see Uh, but when you leave there you're like whoa you know he's he's probably one of the best players we we will have a chance to see and so um and he's continuing to show us that and like i said that that's the part that's not surprising to us Mm -hmm. uh, because we saw that uh when we were recruiting him but the the piece that's surprising to us is his leadership skills and how he's improving that and he's amazing at that coach dev's with us this is the buzz williams show we have another segment with coach dev when we return this is aggie basketball from learfield We continue with the Buzz Williams Show. We're at Rudy's 504 Harvey Road here at College Station. Talking with Devin Johnson. Question, Dev, from Steve. This is the earliest we've ever asked a question, by the way. Steve, this is a new record. Is recruiting high school kids 
become less important since Transfer Portal makes it easier to fill up spots? Great question, Steve. I would, I would say no. Um, it's not less important, uh, especially in a program like ours. We love to develop um, and recruiting some high school players and recruiting from the transfer portal that gives you the great balance that you need. Um, and so, you know, if I look, if you look at our team right now, Wade Taylor, high school kid uh, that we we've developed, Hayden Hefner, mm -hmm. high school kid, we developed Manny Obaseki, high school kid, and I can go on and on and on. And so, um, we we love to develop in our program, and and so recruiting high school kids, recruiting transfer portal, it, it's it's all the same to us. Uh, when we're trying to put a team together. We're out there recruiting the best players. It doesn't matter if they're in high school or in the transfer portal. We're recruiting the best players that can play for Coach Buzz. And there could be a player that you were recruiting goes to another school. You never burn that bridge, correct? Never burn that bridge. And we have a couple of those guys on our team right now uh, that, you know, either played for somewhere else or we recruited them. Tyrese Rafford yeah. at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, Henry Coleman, we recruited him. Uh, to Virginia Tech when he was coming out before, and then he went to Duke and then transferred in. And so, um, you know, we never want to burn bridges. Uh, and, and in recruiting those high school kids, if, if they sign somewhere else, you still want to keep a great relationship with them uh, because you never know what happens later on. And especially with this new uh, transfer portal, um, you want to keep relationships with everybody uh, because you might, you might need them later on. What makes Louisiana players so special? Their toughness. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're tough guys, uh, always have a chip on their shoulder, always uh, want to prove uh, that they belong. Louisiana is a football state. Yeah. And, and so uh, when you can find those kids in the state of Louisiana that loves basketball, uh, you, you ought to go after them uh, because they have something to prove. Uh, they're tough. They can be coached. Um, and and they, don't lot, they don't allow a lot of distractions to get into their way because they want to prove a point. And they're trying to make it um, somewhere that everyone told them they wouldn't make it to. And so that, that chip on your shoulder that you see Chyrese Raffer play with or you see Solomon Washington play with, there's never a stage that's too big for those guys um, because they have something to prove every night. And, and so that's why it's great to recruit the state of Louisiana. Is there an extra edge to the New Orleans player? It is. It is because of the things that uh, New Orleans kids and, and, and uh, adults have been through. Um, you know, Hurricane Katrina, uh, the crime rate in, mm -hmm. in New Orleans and, and just how rough it is. Um, and where Solomon Washington is from is really rough. Um, and I would say uh, out of all of his friends growing up, it's probably two or three of them that had a chance to get out of there. And that's making something of themselves. And that in itself uh, puts another chip on your shoulder. Uh, so you can allow your family to come to a game. Just give them a weekend away from the things right. that they're around every single day. Uh, that brings joy to you. And, and I talk to Solo about that all the time. His mom tries to come to all of the home games. But just giving her that opportunity to get away from the city and all of the trouble that she's going through in the city. And, and, and just be normal here in, yeah. in College Station around her son, around our staff and our program. And, and that's all we try to provide for her. And, and for someone like Solo, let's say, <clears throat> it helps him, family, possibly then the block, possibly the neighborhood makes it better when he's able to succeed, does it not? Yes, it does. And when he went home for Christmas, uh, he went back to the YMCA and did a little <laughs> a camp for him. Um, and it was, it was amazing. So many kids came out. Um, and, 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 you know, after it was over, he and I talked, and he was just shocked at how many kids came out. Um, but he was shocked at uh, how many parents of those kids mm. were just excited, just as excited to see him. And not to see him because he plays basketball at Texas A&M, to see that he got out of the situation that he was in. And he's making something of himself. And so going back to recruiting Louisiana, uh, those guys grew up in a, in a tough part. Yeah. And especially Lord Knight Ward is a rough part of, of Louisiana, of New Orleans. And so to see Solomon Washington get out of that and the way that he's playing right now, it, it, it's amazing. So tie game, late game, that's nothing. Nothing I, to him. I face that. That's the Thursday, right? <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that, that's Once again, not afraid of a moment because of that. Not Correct? afraid of the moment, not, to, not afraid to play in any arena, uh, not afraid of anything um, because he knows if he wouldn't have got out of where he come from, um, it would have been harder there. And so to get out of there and, and come here, uh, 
and, and play for Texas A&M is amazing, a dream come true to him. Uh, he didn't know where the school was that he was going to play at. He just <laughs> knew that he wanted to get out of there. Yeah. And, and just so happily, it's Texas A&M, and they've welcomed him with, with open arms, and he's a fan favorite right now yeah, just, just because of how hard he plays. Well, between, uh, between him and Anderson going into hullabaloo <laughs> after wins, <laughs> yes. you, know, you, got, you got the horn. I don't, Anderson got the horn early, so I don't know what Solomon's playing, but he is there as well. And I just... I love the way they've embraced the 12th man and the way 12th man obviously has embraced him right back. Exactly right. Exactly right. And, 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 and like you said, with Anderson Garcia and Solomon Washington, it, it's, it's not that they have an amazing skill. They just play hard. Yeah. And, and playing hard is a skill. Correct. Playing hard is a skill. And, and so um, College Station, Texas A&M, uh, Aggies, everybody will get behind someone that plays hard, that has passion behind it, and that represents the university the right way. And that's what they do. The uh, atmosphere at Reed Arena, they know when it's a turkey. They know when you're diving on the floor. Yes. They, they, they appreciate it. It's similar to me, Kyle Field. You know when it's third down at Kyle Field, when yes. the defense is on the field. That's what the same way I feel at, at Reed and why it can be such a home court advantage. I agree with that. I agree with that. And, and a guy like Solomon Washington, he loves to play defense. And so when it's time to get a turkey, you know, he's excited. He's pumped up to try and get that stop. Um, you know, going into this season, I'm talking to him. We, we're working out this summer, and, and he comes to me one day, and he says, I, I want to be the best defensive player in the SEC. You know, and – we're doing offense workouts, and I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah. What? you know, and that, that's just how he thinks. He just mm -hmm. wants to guard. Yeah. He just wants to guard the best offensive player, be the best defender uh, in the SEC. And, and, and you see it night in and night out. He's guarding. Um, he's making those winning plays along with Andy. He's making those winning plays as well. And so those two guys, man, we're, we're – so excited to have him as a part of our team. Once I saw Solo start clapping like Dex, I'm like, oh, if he's got that. Because when, when Dex was clapping, I'm like, oh, Dex is going to lock this guy down <laughs> That's right it. now. That's it. When he's at the top of that defense and he's clapping, you know he's excited. <laughs> he is excited. And, and it's great for our team yes. because the other four guys that's behind him that see that, it gets them excited as well to, to guard, to get in the gaps and, and to stay in front of their guy and to finish possession with a rebound. And so we need him at the top of that defense doing those things. Almost like a point guard on defense. Exactly right. right. Exactly yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. It, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you. Anytime that we get together. He's Coach Dev. I don't know who's next. It's going to be Lyle or Rock. One of those, Dev. Thank you so much. Thank you. Devin Johnson. We will continue with the Buzz Williams Show from Rudy. Stay with us. This is Aggie Basketball from Learfield. Howdy Ags, Andrew Monaco here inviting you all to visit Costa Vida Fresh Mexican Grill. Baja style Mexican made from scratch daily, serving breakfast tacos, lunch, and dinner. Aggie owned and operated. That's our friend Holly Johnston in South College Station. We're at Rudy's 504 Harvey Road here in College Station. We continue with the Buzz Williams show or the, hey, that's not Buzz Williams show. <laughs> and this is not Buzz Williams. <laughs> Lyle Wolf with us. Hey, I'm going to get you started. I said what I was going to ask you, but sometimes it's the train going down the track, yeah. and I just jump off that track. Sure. Different coaching with a family? Uh, very much so. <laughs> uh, just a family in general is different. By the way. <laughs> but, uh, no, very fortunate and blessed that, you know, Bauer's turning 10 months. And, wow. Uh, yeah, very. It's funny. Everybody kept saying, get in your sleep, get your sleep, get your sleep, and it's so true. So, but, uh, no, he's been a blessing. He's healthy. Um you know, mom, wife does 99% of the work. Yeah. So, yeah. no, very fortunate. And I'll go down a quick, you know, sidetrack too, sure. just because you did the same. Um, <laughs> it's funny, like when you, good and bad situations, you always like kind of reflect, you do a lot of reflecting, but regardless of what goes on in the organization, you always do a very good job of providing positive energy and contagious energy towards our team and our program. And I don't think you recognize how the positive impact it makes on our I program. I appreciate so that. Not to... I not to fluff you that's, up at all. No, that's nice. And you're, you're you allowed to come back now. No, it, it, and, and here's why. I can tell you honestly. It's a great group to be around. I Very can't so. brag about that group enough. In fact, I, I may have told you. I have told baseball that they're similar to basketball. And then I tell the baseball team the same way. Basketball, sure. they Very have something. There's the joy for one another. No line. question. No I really question. think that's it. And you're never embarrassed if you're, you know what I mean, when I say stuck at a table with them. It's not awkward, anything like that. Like, again, 
you, you have brought in good people, great players and the talent, good people. And that's, that's what's so important. We were just talking in the break. You can play college basketball. You may not be able to play it here under Buzz Williams. 100%. Um, probably nobody has a better feel for that uh, than Coach Rock on our staff. Um, he does a great job of talking about that kind of fit and that puzzle piece. Um, one of the first things we probably evaluate is talent. Like, are they talented enough to play here? Like, right. yes, toughness is a piece, and I'll talk about that, but a wrestler is tough enough to, to yeah. um, necessarily play for Coach Williams, but it, potentially the talent's not there. So once you check off the talent piece, then we move on to the toughness side of things. Can they handle Coach Williams? And then Coach Williams talks a lot about this, but their emotional intelligence is very important mm -hmm. um, to our success. So yes, they need to be intelligent from an X and O standpoint, are they emotionally intelligent in regards to um, feel for culture and family and, and going through adversity? And so um, emotional intelligence is a very dynamic discussion, but we spend a lot of time talking about that. If we talk about recruiting, and, and I talked with Devin about this before, recruiting is about relationships. If it's not, then it's just a transaction, right? Very much so. But if you have that relationship and you say before a player comes in, this is what it's going to be like, then when it gets reinforced every single day, that becomes more powerful for the student athlete, doesn't it? hundred percent. And uh, it's actually one of the negatives probably of our recruiting process is we're probably a little too transparent at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Coach Williams probably alluded to that somewhat, but we are very transparent about our expectations, how we see your future, um, your fit, what we need from you to help our team and program be successful. Um, some guys don't want to hear that. They right. want to kind of hear um, – the attractive part about the process. And so there's always a discussion on, do you sell the vacation or do you <laughs> talk about the travel it gets, the 12 hour travel to the vacation? Mm -hmm. And a lot of organizations sell the vacation to get them. And Coach Williams absolutely wants to sell the vision. He does a great job of that, but he's also very transparent about the process. And um, that's also an individual that signs up for that. Mm -hmm. Henry Coleman listens and says, yes, where do I sign? Yeah. Um, that's the individual that we want. So. A season begins, and it's really not the starting point, but early, is boot camp. But do they realize the 30 minutes of that shooting with Buzz is going to have the same impact, if you will, that one-on-one -on -one with him that other coaches may say they want to do it, but Buzz is doing it every single time. Yeah, I know boot camp is hard. Boot camp's not about that right there. It's about what are you going to do in February and March, teammates bringing everything together. So, yeah, that's the hard part, but then once you get through it, it, may, it makes you closer. It, to me, it's like there's an honesty. You said the transparency, and I get it. I get it. It's, some just want to be told what they want to hear. No question. But that's where I think that separates Aggies from, from other athletes. Very much so. It doesn't mean that our process is better than others. Right. Um, it just means that it's the process that's the best for us, mm -hmm. and we're comfortable going to sleep at night knowing that that's how we had a recruiting discussion with our recruits, and this is how we are comfortable with how we're handling our business, regardless of the outcome, win or loss, what happened last game, we're putting our best foot forward, and that's what we're looking for. We always say to student athletes, do you like who's looking back at you in the mirror? Very that applies so. to coaches too, correct? It does, yeah, absolutely. Because if you're wincing, you're doing something wrong, right? That's the conscience staring back well, at you. Well, I think all you. of us do it in life, whether it's our diet or it's our behavior away from work or it's whatever it is. You know, I'm mad at myself because I had a whole bunch of carbs today and I should have eaten correctly. Like, I think that process is natural in life. Um, but we tell our players all the time, we will continue to maximize our ability as coaches to help them mm -hmm. as long as they do the same, um, you know, reciprocate the same effort. And then that marriage together will end up having a, a positive return. As, as disappointed as that team is on Saturday after the game with Ole Miss, tell me what it's like to be a coach after a game like that. Uh, equally disappointed. Yeah. Like that's the one thing about coaching. Any coach, regardless of age, whether or not you're coaching, um, you know, young kids or – or regardless of the sport, uh, losing is always difficult. That's mm -hmm. never going to go away. Uh, but it's also one of the reasons why the industry and coaching is so fun because winning is so enjoyable as right. well. And so you, you can't love winning but, you know, hate, <laughs> hate losing. But, um, no, we are just equally as disappointed. But at the same time, we are extremely proud of our guys for the, the resilience that they had. Um, there's a lot of things from a tactical standpoint that our staff is continuing to talk through to make sure uh, we improve with our players positioning to win the game moving mm -hmm. forward. And at the same time, I think our guys are disappointed as they should, but at the same time, um, that resilience that they've shown all year and years past and boot camp and last year on our incredible 13 to our 15 and three run, yeah. I, we feel that same energy. And so everybody's disappointed. Everybody's 
um, has that same remorse for that game, but at the same time, we're very optimistic about the future. What I find amazing is after every loss, this is not a team that goes, ah, that's okay, it'll fix itself. They're very much in that process of fixing what went wrong and not being afraid to say, hey, what went wrong in order to fix that? 100%. And I think our players have done a very, very good job, and it's because Coach Williams has led our group this way. Even after unbelievable wins, uh, the win at home against Kentucky or the loss against LSU to start the season, Mm -hmm. our response was the same way. We need to be completely um, immersed in the process of improving what we need to do on a daily basis. And a little bit to what Coach Johnson said, like, let's just control today and improve and maximize whatever we can do. And then, like all things in life, the outcome takes care of itself when you're focused on that process. He's Lyle Wolf. We are continue with the Buzz Williams Show from Rudy's 504 Harvey Road here in College Station. We'll return. This is Aggie Basketball from Learfield. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance wants to give you a VIP Aggie Basketball fan experience this year. Go to 12thman.com slash maroon contest. That's where you register. One winner and a guest receive game tickets. VIP tour of Reed Arena. You'll be recognized on the video board during the game. Register today. 12thman.com slash maroon contest. Texas Farm Bureau Insurance. Proud partner. Texas A&M Athletics. As we look up... uh, this, this is what happens during our coaches' shows. There's usually another game on or games that are on, and you get caught watching. Virginia Tech is playing Duke. Makes me think, like I've asked you guys at times, hey, how has Buzz changed as a coach? Let me go 180 on this. How have you changed as a person under Buzz? That's tough. <laughs> um, coach Williams has matured me in a lot of ways. Um, I've had to grow at a faster rate than I was probably prepared for because of the standard that he demands of his staff um, in a good way, yeah. right? I wouldn't expect that for anything less. Um, I have learned to become way more organized with my responsibilities, disciplined with my decisions and my daily habits. He's elite at that. And so even if you're, he's not trying to preach it to you, you just learn it from osmosis because of how good he is. Yeah. Um, Coach Williams is very much um, a family-oriented individual um, that leads through Christ, and both of those have greatly impacted my life. And so uh, to summarize, that's probably it. I can probably give you small tactical things, but uh, I would not be the man I am today without Coach Williams. Some coaches hire assistant coaches, but they still do everything. He gives you all the responsibilities and values the input, does he not? Very much so, no question. Um, We are blessed, um, and it's not always the case. He gives a lot of responsibility to Coach Rock and Coach uh, Johnson and myself more than a lot of others, even a lot of teams in league play. The head coach does everything almost A to Z, and everybody else just recruits. And so we're thankful for that responsibility. At the same time, you know, we're aware that we still have to perform in in that duty and that job. But uh, we're very thankful that he trusts us to that degree, yes, sir. So if you have that scout and you've got the offense, right, the players all look to you on the sideline. Buzz doesn't say, no, no, look at me. It's, hey, Lyle's saying it. Listen to Lyle. I well, love that. And he's, and he's listening to you as well. Well, very much. And, and everything's um, checked off off the right process. But it's easy to have good offense with good players, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Give the ball to Wade at times and, and let him go. <laughs> but, um, no, I, I will say this. Coach is adamant about this. Whatever we design, we can, we can have 1,000 plays. We can have zero plays. Um, whatever puts our players in the best position to be mm-hmm. successful, um, that's always a thing. And we'll always adjust based off of that. And so our players enjoy that process. We give them as little structure that allows them to be who they are. Um, And that's not always the case. There's a lot of play-heavy organizations. We're not one of them, Mm -hmm. but it's because Coach Williams has that much trust in his players. Um, And that's how we've kind of built things. And that's where maturity and leadership comes of Wade in his third year, Boots in his third year at Texas A&M, but his sixth year of college basketball to have an older Jace Carter, Eli Lawrence, something like that. You can, you can do that. A younger team, you may not be able to do that. Very much so. That is accurate. That is true. And yes, if we were younger and a lot of, even a lot of new transfers mixed in with a lot of freshmen, we would have to approach it differently. But we're thankful there's a lot of experience, um, not only in basketball, but with Coach Williams. Um, and it kind of makes that evolution a little bit easier. Does it help working for him because he's been you? Um, it does. I, I think he actually has a lot more patience with me than he should. He probably should chew on me more than he has. Um, and so I, I'm, I've, I've I'm been clipping this for, for him. I'm going to clip this part. So <laughs> I'm sure he would say the same thing. Trust me. Um, but he gives me a lot of grace. But I think at the same time, it's because he's had that same you know maturation as a professional as well, and kind of that rite of passage. Um, but um, a little bit. I think that's helped 
his mentorship to me, absolutely. And really everybody on the staff, he does understand. But again, and I've always said this, you work for Buzz and you get the recommendation from Buzz, that's gold in any job that you want to get, is it not? It, it is. It's funny. Not many people are asking for his recommendation because none of us want to leave. Right. Um, so it, it's kind of funny that like we all want to kind of stay under his tutelage a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but very much so, we talk about how we are, regardless if we change industries, um, we're very equipped uh, for anything from a professional standpoint. And when teams win, that's when you get the focus of, oh, he coached with Buzz. Buzz is winning. I think I want Lyle on my staff or I want Dev on my – things like that. That that happens with winning organizations. Absolutely. Correct? And I think if – if um, if whatever, if there had to be a transition at any point in time, whether it's a year from now or 20 years from now and I had to go work for somebody else, um, I think the lessons that I've learned under Coach Williams will always apply. And regardless of what the task is or what the direction is, Coach Williams has always been about winning outcomes. It's always been that way, regardless of institution, regardless of circumstances, regardless of following what loss, what uh, eight losses in a row two years ago, yeah. six and five at Christmas, whatever it is, Coach Williams will always come out on the victorious side. And to be a part of what that process looks like makes you feel equipped to do the same thing at a, at a different spot, regardless if it's in coaching or not coaching. Absolutely enjoyed this. Thank you so Appreciate much, your my time. friend. Thanks you a lot. bet. He yes, is sir. Lyle Wolf. And when we come back, the Buzz Williams Show continues. Coach Rock joins us. That's next. This is Aggie Basketball from Learfield. Head on over to your local Rudy's or Rudy's.com to place an order for their real Texas barbecue. Enjoy 100% oak smoked meats, delicious sides, and Rudy's signature sauce. And don't forget, Rudy's serves made-to-order and grab-and-go breakfast tacos every day until 10 a.m. Coach Rock is with us on the That's Not Buzz Williams show. You're not Buzz. <laughs> it's a good thing. You're not either. I'm sorry that I'm not Todd Callis. You could have been doing this with Todd. I was like, if Buzz isn't going to do the show, why doesn't TK come up and do the show? This may turn into Aggie Diamond Hour, by the way. T <laughs> TK's probably resting before he has to go to spring training. Yeah, really difficult. What, you, you, you called him out of the blue at a shoot-around. TK, where are you? He was in Vegas. Right? You were talking about some trades. In case y'all don't know, huge Astro fan. Beaumont guy, correct? Port Arthur. Port Arthur. They don't come much tougher than in Big Port difference. Arthur. Big I, difference. I, I just, I, this, this interview's over. He's not talking to me anymore <laughs> by saying that. Coach at Lamar in Beaumont yeah. is what it was. Yep. Um, huge Astro fan. I think the funniest thing was when we went to the NIT and we're at the Garden and, and staying in the Marriott Marquis. Once, they, once everyone found out there was an MLB store not far from the hotel, they were asking you, how many hats are you going to go buy for that? <laughs> I, I probably have every Astro hat you can have, so I, I probably don't need to buy any more. You got the prototype Astro cap, which gets me. The, the logo they never used, you have a cap of that. I, I have a bunch of them, <laughs> but you can get them in the, in the center field store now. Yeah, yeah. How many games do you go to a year? Uh, probably probably five or six yeah but tk gives me the you know he'll give me the tickets yeah. Devin and i've went to a game luke luke hillens he he loves the astros yeah. too so and i go to some games with buzz yeah. you know he was good friends with dusty baker so um mason and calvin and buzz and myself yeah. we, we would go to quite a few that's awesome i i thought one of the very cool things was when you and buzz showed up in omaha for aggie baseball the, you, you know that was the first time I, i've ever went Really? I, and I don't think Buzz has ever went. So whenever it came up, you know, he was like, hey, do you want to go? I was like, yeah, I, I'd love to go. That that was a very interesting atmosphere. Yeah, I, I think it's a blast. I think it's a blast. J just to see, you know, um, the restaurants and, and all the people tailgating and all that stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a huge college baseball experience. Can I, can I also tell them the story as I'm going to breakfast in the Marriott Marquis? Uh, Rock stops me and says, hey, can you text Schloss and tell him that Buzz and I want to go to the Vanderbilt series? And I'm like, and I get my phone out, and, I'm, and then I stop, and I'm like, Rock, how the heck do you know Schloss? And then I got the backstory that you guys were together at Tulane. Yeah, so in, in 1994, um, he was an assistant baseball coach at Tulane, and I got the Tulane job. And then we just happened to really live across the hall from each other. And so we became really good friends, and we've maintained our relationship. And, you know, he was still at Tulane. I went to the University of Wyoming, and baseball has a, a period of time where they're off, you mm. know, right before Christmas. And uh, he came to see me and flew from New Orleans to Wyoming 
to watch three games during December and, you know, there's four feet of snow on the ground and it's not easy travel and, you know, stayed with me for about nine days and, you know, but I mean, you have to be a good friend if you're going to yeah. travel to Wyoming from, you know, New Orleans during the worst part of this, the, the year. Yeah. And, uh, and so we have a lot of stories like that. I was coaching at the university of Memphis and, uh, he was the head coach at UNLV and he was in town watching a tournament and wanted to know where we were. And, uh, we were all eating together at a restaurant and he came and ate with us. And so, I mean, you know, he, he didn't know that I was here at Texas A&M. Oh, really? He, he was still, co- I was here working. He was still the head coach at TCU mm-hmm. and he texted me out of the blue. Hey, I need to talk to you about something. And so I said, okay. And so later on that night he called me and, uh, he was like, where are you? And I said, I'm in College Station. He, he said, what are you doing there? And I said, well, I, I just went back with Buzz, and, and I'm here. And he says, well, I think I'm going to take that baseball job. Really? And he said, can I live with you? I go, yeah, you can live with me until you find a place, whatever you want to do. You know, so we've been friends for a long time. Yeah. He's a good guy. That's, he, he really is. And uh the thing that got me is I'm texting Schloss out of the blue saying, hey, can Rock come to the series? And he texted right back going, if we have room. And then I talked to Schloss later, and I said, I just found out that you guys were together. And there's stories we can't repeat about. Uh, the, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, really a, he's a great huge guy. Huge basketball. A huge sports fan. I don't want to say just just You're a really good coach and a really good guy. Yeah. Dan, L- lucky to have him. Did, did you notice, uh, I don't know um, how closely you get to watch, but it's what I was saying to Dev and to Lyle, that, that baseball team, what he has, is very similar to what Buzz has with the basketball team, how close they are. Well, and, and I think what happens is, you know, if, and I've seen Buzz for a, for a long period of time. And, and the one thing I'll say about from a coaching standpoint, and I've said it since he was the head coach at UNO, uh, and really at Marquette because all those games are on TV. Yeah. You can you can watch a game, and his team can be down 18 points, 20 points, 21 points, and most people turn the TV off. There's, hey, this game's over. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you turn it off and you turn it on, and there's four minutes left in the game, and the game's tied or he's up by two. Yeah. And I don't think normal people understand that that doesn't just happen. Right. You know, that's because of him. That's because of – uh, his fighting spirit, um, the things that he does every single day with us as a staff, what he does with the players. Um, as long as there's time on the clock, we still have a chance to try to win the game. And But you don't see that. You know, a lot of times people fold when, when that happens. And I think that's the greatest compliment you can give to a head coach is that he's never out of a game regardless of what the score is. And that's a credit to him. Yeah and the relationship he has with his players because they're going to reach down. They're going to believe everything that's being said in every huddle, Mm -hmm. and they're going to try to execute to the best of their ability. And we've done it a couple times this year. When rule number one is always tell the truth, right? (laughs) You know, know, just try to be the best that you can be and help others be the best that they can be. And I think that's the greatest quality that, that you can have as a head coach, and I think he has it. One final segment of the That's Not Buzz Williams show with Coach Rock. When we return, this is Aggie Basketball from Learfield. Our final segment of the Buzz Williams show from here at Rudy's. My thanks to Ty Kiesling, who produces in our Learfield studios, and Kevin Menchow, our engineer. We finish up with Coach Rock. And over the course of the offseason, I kept texting you saying, Oh, Rock, Jace Carter, does he fit? Eli Lawrence, does he fit? And you finally had enough. You said, Andrew, do you really think that we would bring in anybody who doesn't fit Texas A&M? But two guys that have really fit in well, as well as Weldon's Levesque. Yeah, I, and I think that's the most important thing in our recruiting is, um, like Lyle was saying, like Devin was saying, guys that fit what Buzz is looking for. And um, sometimes that's hard because we have to project and, you know, give our opinion of, uh, can those guys do boot camp? Can they do what we do every single day? Um, because there is so, so much responsibility. But, again, um, we're going to be honest and we're going to be transparent and we're going to tell them exactly what it is. And I think that's part of the reason why those guys care about each other as much as they do and they care for um, Buzz as much as they do because they know they've been told the truth. And 
Um, I think they're all rooting for each other. Um, but, you know, I think those guys are tough guys. I think those guys want to be pushed. I think those guys want to be a part of a, a winning atmosphere and a winning culture. And I think they appreciated what we do. You know, it's very different from Kentucky and what Coach Cal does, right? They do more of the one and dones. And yet someone like Dexter Dennis was a one and done and fit in beautifully, right? But he had that makeup of four years, right? A, a maturity almost. Very special person. Yeah. Um, very a special player, but a very special person. And, and, and if you didn't know it when he played for us, you can watch it right now. Yeah. Because to be undrafted and to do the things that he's been able to do as a pro, um, that doesn't happen all the time. And the same thing for Q. And, yes. and I would say, you know, having two pros in two years, guys that are totally under the radar because of the development that they get with Lyle and, and uh, Devin, um, because of the, the coaching they get from Buzz um, and everything that we do, I think it has allowed those guys to – compete at the highest level and be successful when buzz was in the media availability before Ole Miss and he had that four minute answer about leadership and love of the players what jumped back at me on social media rock was the number of former players who reinforced that message where they said yeah that's that's all it he's he's the real deal is he not and I saw some of them I didn't see I didn't see all of them but I mean uh, all of us, we all work together at Virginia Tech. Yeah. And so um, we stay in contact with Ahmed Hill and Justin Robinson and Justin Bibbs and Zach Ledet and Kerry Blackshear. And, you know, I can keep naming mm -hmm. guys on and on and on. And um, I think they appreciated because of the situation that they came into. Um, you know, the thing at, at Virginia Tech was that Virginia Tech had always been really bad. Mm -hmm. And so when Justin Robson, Kerry Blackshear, Chris Clark, all those guys came in that recruiting class, those guys never experienced losing. Mm. Their freshman year, they went to the that's NIT, right. NCAA, right. NCAA, NCAA. Mm -hmm. And so that's unique. And it's very similar here. Um, it, when you look at the years, the years of Coach Buzz Williams, mm -hmm. right? Um, at Virginia Tech, it was year two, NIT, year three, NCAA. I would say it was the same here, except COVID was involved. Right. So if you take Agreed. that out, he's right on target yes. to what he had, has done um, at Marquette and what he's done at Virginia Tech. And so guys come into situations not knowing what's happened in the past um, or what's happened in the, you know, in year one or year two. They're just worried about what they're doing. And we've been highly successful um, in those last – in the last three years. And then the standard is there and the culture is there, correct? Yeah, and, and, those guys, and, and those guys appreciate it probably a lot more when they're gone. Absolutely. You know, because wherever they're, they're at. You got it. You know, Dex and, and, uh, and Q, those guys appreciate everything that they did on a daily basis because they're equipped to do whatever they need to do where they are now. Pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much for this time. Thanks to Dev. Thank Thanks you. to Lyle as well. Saturday, 3 o'clock, Reed Arena, 2.30, our Dos Equis tip-off tip show. 3 o'clock is the tip between the Aggies and the Florida Gators. We thank you so much for being here. Thanks and gig em. This is Aggie basketball from Learfield. <laughs>